In this video, we're going to be talking about the CAT 3116. Basic facts about it, problems with it, and what you need to know. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here, and today we're going to be talking about the CAT 3116 engine. And you might be wondering, hey, this engine's been out for 20 years, why do you want to talk about it? Well, I get a lot of questions about them, and Cat made them for quite a few years, and there's still a lot of them out there, and it doesn't sound like too many people know a lot about them, so I want to discuss the basics behind them, um, what they turned into, displacement, common problems, and things to look for. All right. Okay, so the basics. The 3116 was Cat's first small metric engine, and what do I mean by that? Well... Cat's truck engine before the 3116 was the 3208, which was a V8. It had been around for a long time, basically since the 70s. And Cat wanted to make a metric. And what do I mean by metric? Well, the displacement is listed in liters. Pretty much all the fasteners are metric. And, you know, that means metric threads, metric sockets have to be used. So that's what I'm talking about. And... It's an inline six. So it's basically a seven liter, even though it's 6.6 .6 liter. Um, and it is the base for Cat's small truck engine line up till they stopped making them. So it was, I believe, in 1992 was the first year of the 3116. And a lot of these are mostly in um, military applications. Uh, GMC, tons of GMCs have these. Um, of course, they put them in generators, machines. Um, boats they made a lot of them and their production run was basically to about 1998 so long production run and there's a lot of them out there and it turned into so it went from a 3116 to a 3126 there was a 3126b and then a 3126e then that turned into the c7 and that turned into the c7s and they all basically have pretty much the same block. The head change and the fuel system has changed over the years, but we're just going to be focusing on the 3116 portion. So let's talk about the basic fuel design and engine design of this 3116 CAT engine. So here's a 3116. Now this is a Huey 3116, which there are not a lot of. Most of them are mechanical unit injector. And the Huey ones, the head doesn't really look that much different outside of the injectors are much different. And they use this crossover tube, and this is what finally led to the 3126. And these are what the injectors look like out of the engine. So there's a single O-ring, solenoid is to the side, and then of course you have your injector tip and your single O-ring right there. There's also an O-ring on top where the Huey oil is fed to. Now, most of them on the MUI, or a mechanical unit injector, they have this style injector. So if you have a 3116, you most likely have this style injector, which doesn't use a Huey pump or any electronics. It actually uses a governor. So this is what most 3116s look like. They have a fuel shutoff solenoid and a governor, which control the rack and the fuel to the cylinder head and injectors. Also, notice there is no electronics or ECM on this 3116 behind the filter. Now, what you're looking at here is the injector bore, and you'll notice that it is a copper color at the bottom there, not the standard steel. So, as I already mentioned, the 3116 is an inline six-cylinder diesel engine, standard firing order. It's a 6.6 .6 liter, but they call it a 7 liter. Um, it uses a single exhaust, single intake valve. It's single turbocharged. It's a push rod engine with a camshaft in the block. It uses two different fuel systems depending on the year that you got it. Um, most of them are MUI, M-U-I, mechanical unit injector. Towards the end of the run, they made Huey, H-E-U-I, hydraulic electronic unit injector. Those are much more rare than the MUI, the older ones, before they went to the 3126. Um, what else do you need to know about these? Very basic engine. Um, they use a piston cooling jet. They use a belt-driven water pump. Um, 
The block, like I said, didn't change much when it went to the 3126 and it went to the C7. So a lot of it is the same. It has a front structure and a rear structure. Um, it uses a gear-driven oil pump, gear-driven camshaft, um, pretty much all standard and diesel field. Um, not a lot of problems with the base engine. So let's get into where the problems start. And that is basically with the overhead and with the fuel system. So especially on the MUIs, which most of most 3116s are the mechanical unit injectors. So there's no ECM on a 3116 unless you have a Huey one, which are rare. There is basically a governor and an internal rack inside the cylinder head under the valve cover that tells each injector how much fuel to move and that's controlled by the governor and this all works great um, most diesels of course in this era and previously had used a high pressure pump uh, 3406b's 3208 some um, pretty much all diesels and cat made this design i believe to save money somehow but basically it uses instead of just a nozzle it uses a unit injector that is camshaft actuated so you get a small amount of fuel pressure that's delivered to the head those are that is then in a port delivered to each injector the cam has a lobe and a push rod that then pushes down on the injector spring to increase the pressure by a ton the amount of fuel that is sprayed is controlled by that governor and that rack, which is inside the head. Now, why am I going into such detail about this? Well, I'm going to tell you why. The reason I'm telling you so much about the fuel system is this is the main problem with the 3116. Not that the injectors fail often or that the rack fails often. They are actually not bulletproof, but they'll run for years and years and years without a problem. The problem will come in when you have either an injector cup fail or an injector fail and then you have to get into the overhead and the rack so if you've seen any of my other videos with a c7 or c15 basically you remove the valve cover if it's a c7 you just pull the injector out clean the cylinder put a new injector and put the valve cover on. that's how you change it. you can do it with basic hand tools not on a 3116 so on a 3116 the injector, since it is synced to the rack, which is inside the cylinder head, when you remove one, basically you need to sync the rack, or you should. Um, you don't have to, though. You can remove the injector and not sync the rack, but you might have problems. Um, syncing the rack is very, very, very technical. Um, there are not a lot of guys that can probably do it. And the tooling to do it is extremely expensive. If you're a home mechanic and you wanna try and sync the rack on your 3116, I do not recommend it. It's it's like a 38 step process. Um, you basically have to set up all these little blocks for number one injector, and then you have to sync each injector to the other injectors. It's a real pain in the butt. Um, I've done, I don't know, maybe six or seven of them they all ran well after but it's a very intensive process especially in a gmc chassis because the gmc chassis number five and six cylinders are under the cab and they're very hard to see also you need specialty tooling to do it as i already mentioned you also have to have specialty tooling to do your injector height unlike a 3406e or c15 where you just have a small metal tool that tells you your injector height this one you need an electronic dial indicator injector height tool. There's a lot of specialty tooling. And that's to sync the rack or to do your overhead properly. But to do an injector, even if you don't do the rack, it's a real pain in the butt. Let me tell you why. So let's say you've had an injector fail and you don't want to do the rack because you know it's a pain in the butt. So you pull the injector out and you've seen my other injector videos you just clean the bore clean the cylinder put a new injector in you fire it up and now it's running way worse the reason for that is the 3116 unlike pretty much all the other cat engines that have been made recently 
They use a copper brass. For some reason, cat's literature sometimes says brass, sometimes says copper. Looks like copper to me. And copper is, of course, the soft metal. So the injector has to be pressed into the copper injector cup, injector sleeve, unlike the steel ones. And since there's only one O-ring, the injector doesn't really seal with an O-ring against the combustion chamber. It has to seal against that cup. So if you want to do an injector, you have to pull the old injector out, obviously. You have to then clean the injector bore. But you have to inspect that cup. And usually you have to ream the bottom of the cup. So that takes a special reaming tool. That's cat specific. So you have to then ream part of the cup away to get rid of the ridge from the old injector. If the cup can't be reamed or is heavily pitted, you have to remove and replace the cup, which is much harder than on a steel one. Then you can't just pop the injector in and tighten it down. You have to seat the injector. So there's another specialty tool for seating the injector. So what it does is you basically put the injector in with the new seal. This tool then goes on top and you torque it and it seats the injector into the cup. Then you can install your, your uh, hold down bolt, torque it, and then hopefully run the injector height um, and your overhead and sink it. So that's really where the problem comes into. I've had them too where the cup won't come out um, or they split cups. Uh, you might have to change the cylinder head if you have cup issues on these, which on most other engines you don't have those problems. You can just change the cups. So that's really where the problems come in on the 3116. Outside of that, they're pretty good engines. You don't have bearing failures really um, very often. You don't have, um, you know, water pumps don't go out, oil pumps don't go out. Um, commonly. Um, it's really the overhead is really where the problem comes in. And if your truck's having problems, like I said, you can't take it to any shop where they can just pull an injector and put a new one in. Usually you're going to have to go to a cat shop that has the specialty tooling to do it. And hopefully someone there is good at doing the rack sink and knows what they're doing with 3116. Okay. Just wanted to talk about 3116 because I've been getting a lot of questions on them. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. And thanks for watching.